Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kailash. So once again, uh, I am coming up with a new presentations. So here onwards, I am uh, presenting a series of instrumental methods of analysis. Uh, so in this presentation, I am going to present about uh, colorimetry. Why we need instrumental methods of analysis? when we have different techniques to find out the concentration of a particular compound in an unknown solution we have volumetric analysis we have gravimetric method of analysis but all these different methods of analysis they have their own limitations to overcome these limitations to have accurate values more precision values so we need to go for much advanced version of analysis that is instrumental methods of analysis these instrumental methods of analysis they require very less analyte solution and more accurate results will be there so as a result instrumental methods of analysis have lot of applications so as per the concentration of analyte is to be determined. So in this presentation, I am going to cover one of such instrumental methods of analysis that is colorimetry. In this presentation, we will talk about what the colorimetry is, what is its theory or principle, what is the instrumentation, how it works, and then we will uh, see some of the applications where uh, colorimetry method can be employed. Colorimetry is one of the methods of instrumental analysis which is used to determine the concentration of compounds present in an unknown solution by using an instrument called colorimeter. It depends on or the method is for the solutions which are colored by themselves or which produce color with suitable reagent. So basically colorimetric technique is employed for the colored solutions. Colorimetry is based on uh, the combination of Beer's law and Lambert's law. Beer's law states that when a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a solution, the amount of light absorbed by that solution is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution that is A is proportional to C where A is absorbance and C is concentration of the solution and Lambert's law states that when a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a solution the amount of light absorbed is directly proportional to the path length or thickness of the solution that is A is directly proportional to T where A is equal to absorbance and T is equal to path length. B and Lambert's law, it states that when a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a solution, the amount of light absorbed is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution at constant path length. That is A is proportional to C T, where A is absorbance, C is concentration and T is path length of the solution which is nothing but A is equals to epsilon CT where epsilon is molar absorption coefficient. Now we will see the instrumentation of uh, colorimetry. The basic components of colorimeter includes a light source made up of tungsten lamp then uh, one filter will be there which is used to get a desired wavelength okay that is in other way we can say that to convert the polychromatic light into a monochromatic light because each and every solution absorbs a light at a different wavelength okay <clears throat> then one uh, sample holder will be there usually it is a cuvette so in that cuvette the analyte solution or the blank solution 
will be taken. Then one photocell detector will be there, which detects the transmitted light, converts it into a measurable electrical signal, and that electrical signal will be transferred to a recorder which displays the absorbance value. This is how a typical uh, colorimeter looks like. You can see here a small hole will be there which is nothing but a sample holder. In that sample holder the cuvette containing the solution will be placed and from here from the light source the light will be passed which passes through the filter and that light will be made to fall on the solution and then the transmitted light will be detected by a photocell detector which converts it into an electrical signal and that electrical signal will be detected by the recorder and it will be displayed as absorbance or optical density value. Now we will see how colorimeter works. In order to find out the concentration of analyte solution, first we have to prepare a black solution. Black solution is a colorless solution and then by using that black solution we have to set the absorbance value to zero because we know that only the colored solutions will be absorbing the light. Since black solution is colorless, so its absorbance value should be set as zero. Then we have to prepare a series of standard solutions of different concentrations of the analyte which is in question. And then we have to measure the absorbance value of all the standard solutions. And after that, we have to measure the absorbance value of the analyte solution which is in question. Then to find out the concentration of analyte solution, we have to plot the graph of absorbance value versus concentration. Here in this table, I have given the sample values. The blank solution whose absorbance value is set as 0. Then we have prepared a series of standard solutions of different concentrations of the analyte solutions. For example, from 0 0.001 molarity to 0 0.005 molarity. And we have also measured the absorbance value of all those solutions. It is in an increasing order. And then we have measured the absorbance value of the analyte solution. I have mentioned it as X. And its absorbance value is found to be 0.19, for example. Then, when you plot the graph of absorbance value versus concentration, we will get a straight line passing through the origin. I have not shown the passing through the origin, but it will pass through the origin. And then, we know the absorbance value of the analyte solution that is 0.19 such so that here 0.19 is the absorbance value from this draw a straight line which cuts the calibration curve somewhere here and the corresponding concentration gives us a concentration of the unknown analyte solution so for example let us assume that it is 0.0034 So various applications of uh, this technique are employed in day-to-day -day life. It is used in uh, soil testing laboratories for the analysis of soil nutrients and plant nutrients. It is used in the analysis of alloys, for example, copper or manganese in steel. It is used in uh, clinical laboratories for the analysis of biomolecules such as glucose. It is also used in water and food testing laboratories uh, to check the concentration of critical chemical parameters regularly. So it is used in photometric titrations, that is titrations in which the end point are determined colorimetrically, that is by using colorimetric measurements. So this is about uh, the colorimetric technique. So we have seen its theory, 
its instrumentation and application parts. Thank you. Thank you once again and please subscribe the channel for more videos.